What's up y'all? Happy Homebrew Wednesday. The wife is out getting her hair did and, uh, and the, all the boys are in bed. So I'm inside, not freezing in the brew shed right now. Uh, happy Homebrew Wednesday. Um, I'm going to go grab myself a beer and I will be right back and we're going to go through some cool new gadgets. All right. Poured myself a glass. I didn't get to do a uh, 24 ounce Tuesday yesterday. Um, so making up for it a little bit tonight. Ooh, that means the glass was not very clean, huh? I got this, uh, this Bell's glass. My, uh, my dad and I went up to, um, Michigan last fall to go see Georgia Tech play, uh, Notre Dame in football. Um, it did not turn out the way we wanted as far as the game goes, but awesome nonetheless. We got to uh, see a bunch of breweries in Grand Rapids. Um, on the morning of the game, we uh, we actually drove down through Kalamazoo, stopped in at Bell's, and that place is crazy awesome. It's huge, beautiful. Never dreamed it was going to be that big. The food was great, um, and tried some awesome beers. But that's where I got this Bell's glass, and uh, calling it a 24 ounce Tuesday because this glass is massive it's a wheat glass and um, I don't know exactly how much it holds but um, all I know is it easily holds a bomber which is 22 ounces so uh, so it's a it's a big one so almost 24 ounces uh, if not it's real close so cheers guys this is my uh, my Berliner Weiss so I'm going easy on the 24 ounce Tuesday it's very very light ABV It's so good. This is the uh, Berliner that's going in that competition. The only thing I talked about that a little bit um, on my last homebrew Wednesday, but further on this one, and maybe I'm my own worst critic. I don't know, but um, <clears throat> I'm worried about the mouthfeel a little bit. It's a little light on the mouthfeel. But really good. All right. So, this week, over the last several months, it kind of started with um, with Christmas. So I didn't dump out all the money that um, was required to make some of these new fun gadget upgrades. But um, it's been a while since I bought anything new for my, my brewery. Um, as far as equipment goes, or just gadgets, or tools, this and that. So I picked up several things. Um, over the last several months, I got a couple things for Christmas, um, and then here in the last probably three weeks or so, I purchased a few other things. So let's jump into that right now. First thing I got, small, easy, no big deal, but I, uh, a lot of the times if I'm trying to be really careful, I bottle off my kegs with a, a Blickman beer gun, but um, this thing is always nice to have. Uh, in the past when I haven't wanted to be real careful with uh, really precise filling, I'd just do it straight from the tap. I'd crank the pressure to where it's barely non-existent and um, would just bottle straight out of the tap. Um, <coughs> hold on, be right back. Alright. <laughs> okay, making sure uh, there weren't any bugs. Nobody wants to see any bugs. Um, anyway, usually I would just... Uh, bottle straight from the tap if I didn't want to be careful with it. But this is going to make it all that much easier. It's just a little section of tubing and an attachment for a um, a Perlick. I think I've got a 525 stainless steel Perlick on my um, kegerator. So uh, this is going to work nicely. I might actually uh, utilize this a little bit later tonight. Um, second thing that I got, and I bought this with um, Christmas money. Thank you mom and dad. Amazon gift cards are a wondrous thing. Um, this is not super fancy, but uh, but I think it'll do the trick and at least give me a good in, uh, intro into what I'm trying to do with it. Um, Dan ABA out there may be able to correct me if this is just absolute crap. But uh, I grabbed a pH meter from Amazon. I believe it was in the $25, $25 to $30 range. It's a... Uh, measure up pH meter 
but um, I'd really like to, you know, mash pH as I went to the John Palmer thing is a huge deal. Um, and pH throughout your, uh, your beer in general. A lot of times though, you're, you can make better beer the more and more you dial in the pH of your beer. But if you're not actively kind of um, measuring that throughout the process, a lot of people probably won't notice necessarily. Um, so I'd like to start trying to do some like mash readings and stuff just to get a gauge on, on where I'm at and kind of my starting point. But I also want to use this especially for my sours that I do so that I can uh, measure the pH of uh, and the acidity of what those uh, beers get down to. Especially if I'm doing um, like kettle sour Berliners, instead of purely relying on taste, which is a good indication, I can take little samples and... Um, and really find out exactly what the pH has dropped to, what the lacto has done. So that's going to be really cool. I'm excited to start using this. I haven't dialed it in yet, um, which is the reason I haven't I haven't used it. So I got to get on that. I've got some distilled water back there that I'm going to do. Um, along kind of the same lines, still haven't dialed this in either. Also a, uh, a Christmas present of sorts. Um, that I have gone this long without a refractometer. So I just got this recently as well. Still have yet to use it. Uh, again, I got to dial it in with some um, distilled water I've got back there. Got it handy. Just got to sit down and do it. But I'm excited about this. So I don't have to purely rely on hydrometers anymore. Hydrometers are awesome, but sometimes they're uh, kind of clumsy. And, um, and I'd rather just quickly be able to do this and have to go through all the troubles of, of pulling a, a hydrometer sample. Plus, I waste a lot less beer like this when the when the beer's in the fermenter, and when I've got small small batches of things, I do a lot of one gallon uh, batches, so I don't want to use a ton on a uh, on a gravity sample. So this is going to be awesome. pH meter also from Amazon. I think this was uh, two in like the thirty thirty five dollar range, so not too bad. Um. I then grabbed something because of a video I saw from the one and only Tony Yates um, a couple of his homebrew Wednesday videos back and then I think maybe even this last one he, he kind of did an update on it is a uh, is a pump set up to clean out his beer lines I was going through this crazy arduous wasteful process to um, to clean out my beer lines and it wasn't even doing that good of a job I was filling up a keg like four to five gallons full of of cleaning solution and then using CO2 to push it through my lines kind of collecting it on the other end and then every time I'd go through that four or five gallons I'd have to put it back in the keg repeat the whole process and I sure wasn't able to do it for 10 to 15 minutes per line because it would take me forever so one I was being wasteful too was taking me way too much time so if you haven't seen this uh, pump kind of system that Tony has kind of uh, endorsed. I know he didn't come up with it. It may have been around for a long time, but I'm just now catching on. It starts with a, uh, a pond pump. This is just a real simple and expensive pond pump. Uh, let's see, this is 1,500 liters per hour, so whatever that converts to in gallons for the U.S. people. Um, but not super powerful, but not bottom of the tier either. I think this was like 20 bucks, 25 bucks on Amazon. And I've even got this little switch from Home Depot that when I plug it into the wall, I can just use the quick and easy switch instead of having to worry about plugging it in and out to start and stop. And uh, But then the way Tony had kind of um, shown to do it is that um, the pump comes with this little barb. And I believe it's about a half inch inner diameter barb, which just attaches right here to the outside, screws in. And so what he had done is he had taken a piece of tubing, taken it off of this barb, and then used that half inch inner diameter and found a, uh, another piece of tubing that it was a quarter inch inner diameter, but a half inch outer diameter to where they would fit inside each other, to where they would hook up. And then it would go to this right here which is a, uh, it's essentially a stainless steel uh, ball valve fitting with a, little, uh, with a little flare on the back end of this. Um, so this is that 
quarter inch um, tubing that needs to go to this barb. And then from there, you hook this up to your ball lock on your beer lines and it keeps pumping it through. Um, but what I was able to do, instead of having to deal with the two different hoses um, that, would, that would come from this half inch to the quarter inch on the barb, I was able to find this beauty at a local hardware store. So this is the same, woo, and now I've dropped the barb. Um, this is the same fitting as far as to the pump, but it dials down to a quarter inch size. So I'm able to now just go directly from the pump to this without even any hose clamps. It's snug enough, it doesn't leak, it's fantastic. And so it pumps through my beer lines. I attach a larger set of uh, hose to uh, the outlet of my faucet and just pump it right back into the, uh, the container that's got this uh, pond pump at it. So it's super efficient. I'm not gonna demonstrate it. Jump over to Tony Yates' um, channel and go check that out. I'll put a link down below to that specific video. Um, but thing works unbelievably and, uh, and tired of wasting all that CO2 time effort. And the beer line stuff is expensive, so I was filling up a full five gallon keg with that beer cleaning solution and it was costing a fortune to clean it, which then in turn I didn't do as much as I should be. And then I went uh, one step further uh, on my improvements. And I actually have not even opened this yet. It's just in a plastic bag, so it's nothing real fun. I haven't even opened this up yet, but this is kind of spawning from, one, I should have probably done this a long time ago because it really, really helps uh, in your beer making, but also because I've been doing, not necessarily on purpose, um, but I've been doing a ton of really high gravity beers um, as of late and just really wanted to dial in my process to doing uh, higher gravity beers. So because of that, I got an oxygenation kit. So this is a, uh, I think I got this oxygenation kit from Williams Brewing online. Um, I did it from there because the one that was included in this is, uh, is a 26 inch wand with a 0.5 micron stone at the end. I did that because the wand is longer than most of the other kits that I saw. Um, it also came with uh, the little regulator here. Just a real simple cheap regulator that you then attach to just a little uh, oxygen tank that you can get at Home Depot, Lowe's, um, that kind of deal. But yeah, so it's just a really simple um, but effective um, oxygenation system that I can pump some oxygen into my beers uh, right before I close off the uh, the fermenter. So crazy excited about that. Can't wait to use it. And I feel like it's really gonna improve my beer, especially my uh, my high gravity brews. So, uh, so all that, on top of that, I have one last gadget. It's more than a gadget. And uh, let me go show you what it is. I know if I have to get up, that's a good sign. All right, All right so uh, apologize for the mess, but there she is. There she is. None of you have seen kind of my setup up till now, but I've essentially been using a 20-ish dollar turkey fryer as my uh, propane burner outside. And I decided to step up, and I decided to step up in a big way. It's the uh, Blickman top tier floor burner, and I got the leg extensions to go with it as well. This thing, I haven't gotten to use it yet, haven't tested it out or dialed it in, but this thing seems to be a beast. Incredibly heavy, well built, solid. There's the burner on the inside. But yeah, so happy to make this upgrade and cannot wait to use this thing for the first time soon. So apart from that, 
<laughs> just that. Between uh, pH meter, refractometer, um, kind of growler filler thing off my Perlix, the pump for recirculating my uh, beer cleaner, um, and the Blickman top tier floor burner. I have done uh, a lot of upgrading and uh, new gadgets, and I uh, can tell you, especially if my wife is any indication, that there won't be any more upgrades for quite some time. <laughs> but awesome nonetheless. A couple real quick updates. This video ain't gonna go too much longer. I, um, my wife and I, and I trust my wife's tasting abilities way more than myself. I have five gallons of various aged um, Lambic style beers that have been sitting up in uh, my closet for almost a total of three years now is the oldest. So we did a tasting for the proportions for our goose. Three years in the making and um, out of those five gallons, really three gallons, separate gallons. Um, with our different ages really uh, represented what we wanted to put into it and how we wanted to blend it. So I'm not sure if we're gonna get much, if any more than three gallons out of it, but hey, I'm gonna take it. I believe I'm going to, especially um, with the, the struggles I've had as of late and making sure my sours are carbonated enough, I'm going, I think I'm gonna actually keg it and bottle off that keg. I won't run any off through my my faucets on tap, but um, but I'm gonna keg it and then beer gun it off the keg uh, to, to get in bottles for safekeeping. Um, so one, for longevity. Two, make sure I dial in that carbonation. It would be a, a shame to get this far three years into a process and then mess up because I, I screwed up the carbonation levels. Especially because the goose you want to be kind of effervescent and really highly carbonated. Um, that's just not something I really want to mess with or invest in um, really heavy bottles or anything like that. Even though it'd be more authentic to be uh, um, bottle conditioned. So you can see this. Uh, I'm a big fan of this Berliner. It's nicely carbonated. I don't even know if that's going to. It's gonna actually um, zoom in, but it's pretty clear. Pretty clear. It's getting close to being. It's got a little bit of haze to it. There's some condensation. But speaking of that goose, I'm running out of keg space, so I may actually <laughs> lazily not beer gun it, but I may fill um, a bunch of bottles. I think there's probably about a third left of a uh, keg of this Berliner. I may fill up a bunch of bottles using that keg filler um, just because I'm, I'm not super um, worried about getting those bottles perfect and then use that same um, keg to do the goose. But anyway guys, cheers. Hope you've had an awesome week. Uh, a fantastic watching all the videos, loving them. Shout out to all you guys. Um, but I'm going to get out of here because i got to keep these videos shorter than what they were before. So guys, this is Not On Sunday's Brewing from uh, right outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Cheers, y'all. Uh, like, shoot me a comment below. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And um, go check out all the guys that have commented or will comment. Um, if you have, aren't subscribed to them, go check them out. They're all awesome. Y'all have a great rest of your week. Cheers. We'll see you later. Be safe. Keep on brewing, y'all. Cheers.